power. It's the what? Power, power. It's the who? Power, power. Yeah, yeah. Blacks, Hispanics, and natives. Power, power. It's the what? Power, power. It's the who? Power, power. By order of Alvizu Campos, the cadets adopted a military structure with companies in various towns of the island. Alvizu Campos, who had served as a lieutenant in the United States Army during World War I. So, but, so mind you, he had served yep. for the United States. This yep. wasn't just some fly-by-night, right? Wait, wait, wait. In World War One. In World War One, Bro, you know what? You see movies and stuff. What the World War, like, war then was real jacked up, bro. bro. And he was a lieutenant. He wasn't enlisted. Like, that's someone that had some, some type of education behind yes, him. he was a smart guy. <laughs> right. He was a smart guy. But like, like, he was like, uh, like Apollos. Mm. He was like Apollos. In the scriptures, because they tell you like Apollos was well spoken, right? He right. was he was a, he was a lawyer. He was educated. So he says, I believe the cadets had to adopt a system of strict military training if they were to become a powerful Puerto Rican army. Our people understand this is idiots who can't see the mission that get upset and offended and sensitive when we have a militant style to how yeah. we do things. Hey, and another thing, you have to understand something. During this time, the truth wasn't wasn't out. No. 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 So Cer they, they, no. they certainly they, not with in Puerto no. Rico. No, right. they did what they felt was necessary to defeat the oppressor. Right. Okay. They they made it a a, a carnal war because they didn't know any better. Hey, and you have to realize something. We often forget as Israel that we were militant in the wilderness. We had ranks and files and standards and banners, yeah, yeah, and me, we marched yeah, no. and Dude, we in moved. the wilderness. We fought. Yeah, let me tell you. We yeah, fought constantly during, during those forty years. We, we took were, land. No, and not just did we fight. We were marching to the battle from Egypt. The most I said, "Oh yeah, you're gonna go down here, but you're gonna have to do work." And in the time of Joshua, that's exactly what we did. It's in our spirit to be militant. That's right. So if you're on board with anything else and still profess to be uh, an Israelite, there's something wrong with you. Look at This is uh, Judges 3, verse 2. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at the least as such before knew nothing thereof. That was always, that was always the MO, to teach us to war. Nowadays, it's not carnal, it's spiritual. But like the thing is, the scripture says that the things that are written a fourth time are written for our learning, right? The, like the Mosai is a mastermind. Like the same way that I really think that the Mosai was working with um, Nat Turner, he had to be working with his brother. That way, in these last days, you can yes. see these examples and say, "Look, this is the type of revolutionary mind that we have to have." But yes. now, do it according to this. Yes, that's the that, and that's a. Uh, I think when we went to uh, Memphis and we saw where uh, Martin Luther King was assassinated, we did a little clip for the show way back when. And uh, I remember first coming into this truth, we used to. Uh, right. not talk. I don't want to say talk bad, but we would not really give respect to the former revolutionaries, um, because of the fact that they were not using the Bible. But you have to realize that, uh, like you said, the Most High does put a spirit in people, mm -hmm. and while it might not be the full understanding, it's because it's for His time and portion. If these revolutionaries that we're speaking about, right, Southern Kingdom, Northern Kingdom, all right had not made the moves that they made and made the strides. Like, you don't think the Most High's hand was in the civil rights movement so that we can be able to speak the truth in these yep. last days? Yep, of course. I mean, you know, obviously things are going to go bad again for speaking this truth at some point in time. That's prophesied. But there's a little space, right? There's a little help that we would get to be able to preach this and bring this out to the people en mass to accelerate the awakening. Hey, two points. For all we know... Albizu Campos had the spirit of Joshua in him in the regeneration. That's right. Right. I was thinking oh, the I was thinking the exact same thing. Okay. I said I said that's a son of none right there. Right. Number two, that civil rights movements and all these movements paved the way for us to be able to have the freedom of speech and freedom of assembly to teach on the streets mm -hmm. without getting knocked upside our heads yet. Right. right. You wouldn't yeah. have been able to to, to be out in the streets nope. doing that stuff. Nope. Not at all. Didn't so. So now the understanding is that, yes, there, there's, there's respect. There's things that we can learn from them in an example, especially with millennials. Yes, sir. For sure. Because that spirit's not there. That spirit's not there. It's all rioting and reveling, right? Uh, excess, drunkenness, right? YOLO. YOLO. That's 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 what life is about for this new generation. What, uh, what, what I'm not, what, what the book is going to bring out, 
and I don't think this is what we're reading in Wiki brings out, is that not only would a cadets of the Republic, that training arm, like I said, similar to our men of valor, they focused on the younger men because they knew that that's where it was needed. Mm -hmm. They built up those younger men instead of shunning them and doing that stuff. I, as I was reading this, and, and the way I'm going to be presenting it is, is to show you the similarities of how we move and how they moved and how they were fighting and they were trying to do a revolution. Right, it was narrowly focused because they wanted independence for Puerto Rico to be a player in the world. It, it, just like all the other movements of, of, uh, of the uh, revolutionaries that came before us because we are also revolutionaries in the spirit of christ That's you better right. believe that you come into this thing you say that you profess to to be following christ the true messiah and you believe everything that this bible says you're enlisting into a revolution that's right and that revolution starts with your repentance right because revolution comes from the root word revolt right and yep. not that we're doing it uh, uh, physically but we're revolting from uh, the uh, the imaginations of this world, right? right? The strongholds of we were told, the strongholds of this world, of all the lies that we were told, the wool that was pulled over our eyes, and instead of fighting fist to fist, toe to toe with weapons, our warfare is to fight against the lies that they continue to perpetrate, the idolatry that they put out there, to tear down the strongholds and every high thing that exalts of itself against God. That's what the Bible says, mm -hmm. and that's what we do. But it Jesus needs to be done. <laughs> We love you, bro. Well, you bought over there. Huh? <laughs> in the moment. You know what it is? He really wants to be sitting right here, <laughs> but he still has to train these guys so that we don't have any mistakes over there. So he's he's there. So <laughs> that's his acknowledgement that I was correct. So you're gonna see these parallels, and 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 my aim is to show you that in something less noble, in something less spiritual, you had uh, some of our brothers. And sisters, I'm going to show you, who had the mindset to stand up for something and fight for something. And there was not this selfish BS going on. Yeah, their, their uh, women's wing was called the uh, Daughters of Freedom. Yes, Damn. that is correct. Yeah, and if you that notice the theme, everything was you about... Took, you took my thunder away. Oh. Everything was about <laughs> freedom. <laughs> everything was about freedom. You see, yep. because they weren't knowledgeable in the scriptures, their freedom, okay, was physically being free. Our freedom is spiritually and, me and, and mentally yep. with the Bible. That's what the Bible teaches, spiritual and mental freedom, okay? Just like the Matrix. Right. Right? You, 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 uh, I don't know. I forget which freaking pill, but you took the one that, that, that gets you out the Matrix. That's the Bible. That's the red pill. You took the other one, you went back in and went to sleep. Yep. It's the blue pill. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, so he was a. Uh, he believed that we needed to adopt a system of strict military training if they were to become a powerful Puerto Rican army. Now, mind you, he understood when we go back to the book that he, no army he could build could physically topple the United States. But by his revolutionary actions, his aim was to bring awareness to the island for the ultimate goal of getting independence for his people, Freedom. right? Freedom, right? Like you said, Braveheart. Freedom, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's what he wanted. So it says uh, he believed that a well-trained and disciplined, well-trained and disciplined army would eventually be able to fight against the United States imperialism, which ruled the island. Albizu Campos often referred to the cadets as the... Uh, I'm ejército. A, I'm an, ejército. Ejército. I knew I was going to mess it up when I saw it. Libertador de Puerto Rico, the Liberation Army of Puerto Rico. Cadet headquarters was located at uh, Numero 11 de la Calle del Cristo in Old San Juan. Uh, I've, I've walked down that street many times when I visited. Do you want me to read it? The cadet organization was divided into companies throughout the cities and towns of Arecibo, Cabo Rojo, Calle, Dorado, uh, Guayama, Humacao, Isabela, Hayuya, Lares, Mayajuyas, Naranjito, Ponce, Sabana Grande, San Germán, San Juan, San, San Juan. Lorenzo, San Sebastián, and Utuado. That's where we're from, Cabo Rojo. Yep. Um, Utuado. Uh, we were not Utuado. too far from there when we, uh, when, we, when we were interviewing the professor. San Juan was the only city with more than one cadet corps. Besides the main city, San Juan also had cadet corps in the sectors of Atorre, Santurce, and Rio Piedras. Showing you, again, that same format of a little sanctuary in every city mm -hmm. for these people to get together and bring things out. Much like you see us with the camps today. Right. 
You had uh uh just like the we were showing earlier. Yeah, we have somebody in Massachusetts. We have somebody here. We have somebody there. Right. We had someone call from what? Um, Toronto, Canada. Toronto, Baltimore. Right. That's why these people that say that you don't need a camp, bro, you're idiots. How can right. you believe the scriptures and hear that 3,000 have repented in one yes, day they, but not have a it, place? That is one of the reasons right here because here we're bringing out the spiritual knowledge and preparing our minds uh, and MOV, our minds, body, and souls. Right. Absolutely. We have to build that up. And and showing you and reminding those people because if you're one of those that say out the hell with camps I'm gonna be in a lone react you are not a revolutionary you, you are, are a not. phony you are not you are a phony bring it out you want to sit on your couch or behind a computer screen only and not try to build and come together the scripture tells us to gather ourselves together let's get that real quick it says gather yourselves together nation not desire Albizu Campos could have went the single route right yep. he was World War yep. One vet yep. He could have said, I'm going to I'm gonna do this on my own. No, he understood strength in numbers. He understood unity. He understood the discipline. All right, but he could have very well went on his own, right? If you if you come into this acknowledgement that you're an, an Israelite through a camp and then you break away from that, guess what you're doing? You're letting up your, your talent into a napkin, and that thing's going to get snatched from you when Christ returns. You ain't getting the kingdom like that. There's no way. He got all these people online, and guess what? They do gather themselves together. In wickedness on the internet around right, all right. that BS. Right. You are not a revolutionary if you're not on board with gathering together and bringing about power. When you read these examples, what comes to your mind, any revolution, there was no revolution where he sat by himself on a damn couch. Nope. Hey, we would not be reading about him today if he rolled in that spirit. And then you leave an organization that's already organized, set in place to start from scratch? Ridiculous. You have strength in numbers. When you with when you when you with the uh, to, USC, to you say you're gonna teach the same thing, right? What is the point? What's the point? Exactly. Why are you creating something else when there's a movement already in place to make it no, to make it roll? No, you know what that is? That's a sign of weakness and individualism. Yeah, Read this. Yep. Read this. The book of Zephaniah, chapter two, verse one. Without the scriptures, right? Because they don't mention that they were using the scriptures in this. They still operated with this, but that's, that's why in right. the spirit you got to see this thing. Come on, Zephaniah two and one. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. We are commanded to gather together, O nation, not desire. We're not saying everybody got to be under one camp, but we're talking about those phonies out there who profess to be for the people, who profess to be revolutionaries, and all they are is wolves in sheep's clothing. They coconuts, brown on the outside, white on the inside. They just as bad as the AOCs yep. and uh, and uh, Sotomayors and yep. Kamala Harris and whoever else you yep. want to put up to be a figurehead and say, look, your people are represented in our government, leading. No, they're not. You're phonies. You're trying to take people away and put them to sleep. Right. Can I say something quick? Uh, it's like what y'all y'all brought out about revolution in the beginning. You said it starts with yourself. Mm -hmm. So them brothers, it's something in themselves that they do not want to revolt. They don't want to change in themselves. Yeah, sin. Exactly. So because of that, that's what uh, leads them away. You sin, know what? Sin, sin rules in their members. You know what's heavy about reading things like this is that um, Christ said, listen, you, you can't love God unless you have the second great commandment, right? And you love your neighbor like yourself. They had that heavy back then. That's something that people even in this troop today don't have. They don't have that. That uh, loving your neighbor like yourself, that's why there's malice and envy and strife and murmuring and all those things. Let me tell you why that's important, and you and I could relate to it, okay? Because when you're in a battle, you mm. need to know that that man in your foxhole got your back. 110%. And the only reason yep. why he got your back is because of he, he cares about you, mm -hmm. and he knows the mission is for both of you to survive. Because when you're done, you by yourself in that foxhole, that's a problem. Yep. Because how far away is each foxhole, bro? Oh, four. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so you on yeah. your own. Yep. Hashtag right. facts. Right. Right. That was heavy. So check this out. They got chain of command. He had a chain of command. And they understood this without the Bible. They galvanized. You know why? Because what was more important to them than their selves was freedom for each and every one of them mm -hmm. from the oppression that they were in. Part of the problem why our people don't roll with this stuff is because we don't see that we are oppressed. You don't believe you're oppressed. Nope. That's, that's exactly you what You can it buy is. J's. You can go out to eat. You have a nice roof over your head. You're able to get a mortgage. Right? And I'm not saying that you don't do those things. You've got to be in the world. Right? 
but not of it. You got to use it, but not abuse it. They said, I can buy J's, I can smoke J's. But hey, you don't believe oppressed? you're oppressed. Oh, they could man. be demeaned in their job, right. day in and day out. Yeah. But yeah. because they have all yeah. the, that job provides them with all the comfort creatures, the creature comforts. Yep. Yep. They don't think they're oppressed. And, How about that? And that was a tactic. Because it tells you here when we read about Julio, right? Julio Colon. He says he was jo- he joined because he was tired of cutting Kane 60 hours a week for a salary of $4 and because four Yankee companies own most of the farmland in Puerto Rico. We got to bring to our people's remembrance mm-hmm. that this illusion, the matrix, the wool that's pulled over your eyes, don't think you've arrived just because you're making some money. You got to find that in you to realize that this is not your rest. He says he joined because he was trapped like a caged animal. We forgot that will to survive. They have made us docile. Yep. They have gentrified us even yep. and we have to rise up against that let me tell you why the bible is so important in this with just one point it's many 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 points because they don't feel that their land was taken from them you know why because they don't understand that the bible speaks about something called regeneration yep. they don't understand that they were here all of us were here when this land was taken from us when all our lands were taken from us okay they don't understand that with that very one one important fact okay so because they, they, they haven't started on a road to repentance and started looking at this Bible as their key to salvation, as their blueprint to getting the hell out of here mm-hmm. and being put back in the rightful place of rulership, they're never going to understand that. This is why they're comfortable. Yep. Right. Yep. Hey, he says he joined because he, a man who gets up at 4 a.m. every morning, climbs a mountain in rain or fog or killing heat, and sweats all day with his mosquitoes in his mouth, does not need an empire telling him how to live. His problem was not working. My my everyday life. I mean, this is terrible. <laughs> I know, I feel his, it. Yeah. his gripe. I can relate. Too. His gripe was not working. My goodness. His gripe was busting his hump and then still having someone what language to speak, right. what heroes to worship, that's how to live his life. Yeah. That's yeah, just yeah. like today. Right. That's what a good is, point you bring out. Yeah. That's a good point that you bring out. It wasn't working because heck, working all those hours. Yeah. Right, he was doing it for years. Trust me, they were doing this as they were kids. Yep, it was working and having nothing to show for it. That's right, oppression. That's right, and this is why, like he brought out, America understood that, and it says, no, we're gonna work them to the bone, and we'll have them believe that they have something to show for it in the form of a house, in the form of a car, in the form of money in their pocket. Right. Okay, different strategy. That's all part of the Willie Lynch crap, man. That's the crafty council. Mm. So it says there was a chain of command. We're back at the Wikipedia article. It says there was a chain of command. The cadets had a chain of command which had to be followed. Regular cadets were first and second class soldiers and larger companies had sergeants. The commanding officer of each company held the rank of captain who reported to a sub commander with the rank of colonel. So it's telling you they were soldiers. They were officers. It was hierarchy. They were captains. They were deacons who in turn reported to the commander in chief. The commander in chief reported only to the president of the Nationalist Party. And that was it. And they rolled with that. There was no bucking up against it. There was like, I don't feel right about this. This feels too aggressive. Was, this feels like this. There was no uh I'm older than you, so why should I listen to you? Oh God. Nope. Numbers. Cadet Bruh, recruitment was the responsibility right. of each captain. It's just like what we wrote here. Cadet recruitment was the responsibility of each captain. Captains develop the men under them. We're over the regions. We visit the schools. United States government reports showed that by the mid-1930s, cadet membership was growing exponentially. Everybody missed what we just read, though. And we're going to get into it when we go back to the book. It says the United States government, who this movement was a movement against the government, Mm -hmm. had reports. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Familiars. By the mid 1930s, that knew the cadet membership was growing exponentially. They were watched. I'm gonna show you it on pages on excerpts from the book. You're gonna see the familiars. You're gonna see the informants that were amongst them. Uh, and and you need to have the awareness that you best believe that that's happening here with us today. That's Don't be right. shook. Don't be shook. This is the time that, that that you glorify God. That you know that you're in the right place to be at the best time ever to live. That's right. How do we go from all that? That they, you see how they threw that in there mm-hmm. without Slave. even really mm-hmm. telling you about it. Yeah, right? about me too. <laughs> it says <laughs> cadet membership was growing exponentially, particularly amongst young members age 18 through 25. The female members of the Nationalist Party had their own organization known as the Hijas de la Libertad, the Daughters of Freedom. 
It is estimated by the FBI and El Mundo <laughs> newspaper that at its peak, around 1935 to 36, cadet membership reached over 10,000. Now, those are estimates. Mm-hmm. Right? Those are estimates. So, so if they, if they, if they counted them via the census and all other methods, okay, sending people in to do interviews from the other nations, just sending people in from our nation. The same exact thing. Yep. yep. They're trying to number us. Yep. Bro, as I was going through this, I said, gosh, I said, this is us. It's the same thing. But that spirit of revolution was inspiring as I read this. That's a form of Ezekiel 47 of the waters rising. Yep. Yep. You're right about that. You're right about that. To be able to look at that. Because you know what? I'd have read this before the truth, and I'd have just been like, wow, okay, yeah, they were revolting, okay, mm -hmm. whatever. I would not have seen the parallels of You'd what You'd have been like, oh, this is nice, but I'm still Spaniard. Yeah, but I'm still <laughs> Spaniard. Yeah, there you go. Bruh. <laughs> Let go. Israel is back. We back. Israel is back. We got back. the nations running scared because Israel is back. All lies on us because we keeping the